Whilst at Challenge Rot, we jumped into the Pro Paddock pre-race to see if we could find any cutting-edge custom tech. And it did not disappoint. Okay, we've come now to the pro side of the paddock and uh, some speed machines and no less uh, kind of innovations going on here. Uh, we've got Sam Ledlo in number two and Magnus Ditlev in number one. And we're gonna look at their bikes. Both of those two canyons have got these extreme extensions uh, in the front here that lean really far forward, both Daniel Backergaard and Sam Ledlow's, which is kind of unique. You don't see these on many other bikes. Uh, they're obviously trying to get as far forward as possible. They've both got these really long uh, kind of arm, arm holders, arm holders. And then uh, Daniel Backward's actually got these custom, they look like 3D printed um, hand grips here with special finger holes so his hands don't slip, which is uh, an interesting uh, innovation because, I mean, there's nothing really wrong with the Ergon ones that come with the, with the Canyon. And then we've got Magnus Ditlev's bike, which is pretty extreme i mean we've covered this before he's got this extreme cockpit which is like molded around his arms and everything on an extremely high rise but then he is a really tall guy and then behind his saddle he's got this weird i thought it was a bottle or a spares bottle or uh, some kind of like a uh, storage thing but i don't think it actually is i think it is literally just a fairing because i can't really see any way of getting into it interestingly though that definitely looks like a GoPro mount on the back of that. Uh, I'm not sure he's going to be putting a GoPro as a dash cam to see who's drafting him in this race. Uh, but clearly they, that's, a, that's a plan uh, maybe to put a GoPro on there. Um, I'm not sure why otherwise you would have a GoPro mount on the back there. Well, what else you might be mounting on there? Well, moving a row over now from James, we have got Ben Canute's bike, Patrick Langer's and Brad Weiss's bike. And we, again, we've got some custom and interesting stuff going on here. So for, I'm going to start with Patrick's first. So he also seems to have a uh, fairing thing coming off of the seat post and below the, uh, the rear hydration or the rear cage. Coming forwards, he's got that tapered extension or tapered spacer into the aero bars, which I've seen a number of times, not quite as drastic as the others that James has just spotted. On Brad Vices, he's also actually got some custom 3D printed bars from a company called South, I believe. It's a, a company from South Africa that actually can turn the bars around apparently incredibly quickly custom to your arms and apparently Brad got these in the space of just over a week for Ibiza. But coming to Ben Canute's, this one's quite interesting and has me actually scratching my head a little bit. Mostly this part here. I mean, the, the whole front end looks sort of custom in some way, but there seems to be this kind of grip. I'm not really sure why it is. And then it's got like a spongy bit on the front. Maybe he gets so far forward he puts his chin on it. I don't know. Ben, get in touch. Let us know in the comment section down below. Uh, maybe just hooks, hooks his thumbs through, but I really have no idea what that's for. Okay, we've moved a little bit further on now, and now we're at Andy Dritz's bike, uh, known as one of the best bikers uh, in, the, uh, in the field. And he's got a Cube Air MC68, which is a fast bike already. And interestingly, he's fit these uh, like bumpy strips down his seat post, seat tube, which is interesting. This is actually something we saw on the Pinarello but that they built specifically for uh, Ganner's hour record. And I haven't really seen it on any tri bikes and it's clearly an aftermarket edition. This didn't come on the cube bike. Um, it's supposed to, apparently Pinarello said anyway, mimic the tubercles on humpback whale's fin that kind of breaks the airflow and makes it a lot smoother. Uh, and Idritz has obviously taken that technology and applied it to his Cubarium C68 for some more marginal gains. And then moving on to this one, it's Jean-Claude Bess's bike. And it's a Cervelo, I think it's a P3X. Uh, and he's actually removed the bento box that goes in here and slid the bladder from a specialized hydration system. And then he's made this special, I think it's 3D printed, uh, kind of, box that kind of holds it in place. So you can see on the top here, it's actually got an S for specialized because it's the specialized hydration bladder with the straw coming out of it that is then attached there. And then he's 3D printed these little extensions for his arm cups because 
obviously everyone's got these really long arm cups now and his one didn't come with him and he's kind of just bolted them on there uh, clearly they couldn't quite match the color though they're orange go figure Okay, I'm competing a little bit with a DJ right now, but I'll give it my best shot. So this is none other than Sebastian Keenley's bike. This is his last big triathlon here in Germany. So he has marked the occasion with this wicked custom paint job. Uh, it is, of course, his discontinued tour that he's been uh, doing the last year or so. Uh, it even says, mine erste to triathlon, my first triathlon, and I presume the the writing on there has some meaning to that, but I absolutely love the paintwork. But that's not really why I'm here right now, because it's actually these handlebars that are custom made. So I believe James has actually found them in transition on someone else's bike. These are made by Radsport Iber, and they actually have a hydration system in between the arms here. It's probably around 500 mil. You can actually refill that, but it's got a little straw hidden away underneath this helmet that you can pull up and drink from. It's also got a secondary straw that then will access the storage and hydration that's in the down tube here. So pretty neat design. Also have noticed on a number of the bikes here, some very special new tires from Schwalbe. There's some prototype tires. They say Schwalbe Pro 1 TT, but they've got this blue outer around them. Now I know, having been at Eurobike, that they have this new technology called Eurotham, which they used on some inner tubes. They've now brought it into their tires and supposedly they've managed to be able to reduce the rolling resistance of these tires and the weight by something like 50 grams. We're seeing it on a lot of the, a lot of the pro bikes Bike, so quite an interesting move. I'm now here with everyone's favorite, Joe Skipper's bike. And he's yeah, gone a little bit rogue on a couple of things here, but we love it. Uh, firstly, his number is stuck on with sellotape. Just, just good old ordinary sellotape like you'd use to wrap your presents. And some kind of surgery tape here. It's probably from there, actually. Uh, probably a bit of last minute work from Joe Skipper. Also notice he's got one of the Wove saddles, which I haven't seen many of. But what's interesting with these saddles, or what Joe has done anyway, it hasn't got a rail to it. So it's actually just bolted directly down onto the seat post, which is pretty wild. He's also got a really cool revolver tri-spoke. Um, and also notice that, well, Joe, you just need some new padding on your O-bars, mate. It's an absolute, I don't know, patchwork quilt going on there. Now, as you go further down the pro ranks, we're now uh, quite a ways down, and you definitely see a trending increase in the amount of duct tape on bikes as uh, the support from their sponsors kind of dwindles and they're trying to get the same aerodynamic advantages with less uh, technological support. Here we've got Bruno Sliegers from Belgium and he's got his, he's got a bottle cage mounted right on the top tube and my knees would definitely hit that. I don't know how he gets away with that. But he's turned an Altegra crankset into an aero Altegra crankset with a whole bunch of duct tape, as you do. Well, now beside Danny in a reef spike, and she's got some pretty wild aero bars going on here. So presumably these have been made by Swiss side, or it's just a graphic put on, who knows. But what's interesting about these is they're almost made in two parts, and it looks like you can kind of change out the top of it. So this part is 3D printed out of plastic, it seems, but that is then removable. It looks like it kind of cuts in into a groove in this lower part, which seems to be made by from titanium, also presumably 3D printed and then custom to the hand grip. But it really does, it's, it's a long bar. It looks pretty neat. Well, another set of aero bars that I haven't seen before, and this is on Eleanor Illidich's bike, and this is on the Cube Arium C68 here. So it's got the hydration unit on the front and these aero bars that are almost kind of one piece, they connect to one another, but built around the hydration unit here. I've not come across these aero bars before, but they, they really are quite impressive. They, they well, look a work of art, really. The arms are slot in here, bike computer unit would go on the top here and hugs around the top of the arms but it also looks like these bars are made in two halves and then there's a little cover here presumably where they're screwed together but you wouldn't know at a glance I mean it looks really smart but what's quite cool is she's gone for the buttons one above the other so she's really kind of hugging the hands over one another and resting the thumbs over neat position Honestly, we were just scratching the surface of what was on display there. The Pro Custom Tech was on another level this year. Let us know which was your favourite in the comments down below. Thanks for tuning in. See you next time.